Hello everyone, my name is Nagura and today I bring you my Munkin guide for 10.2. Alright, so first of all, I do want to give a quick shout out, a huge shout out to Chicken, Jundara and OI who are writing the Munkin compendium. I will link it in the description below, which is a very detailed um, Munkin guide in written form. You should definitely go check it out if you want to have any more information that I'm not mentioning in this guide. This guide is supposed to be more of a visual guide and a more simple guide. So. If you have any other questions or you want to have more details, then check out the guide. I'm linking it in the description below. All right, so the structure of this guide is going to be that I'm going over major changes in 10.2 first. Then I'll go over talent builds that uh, I can recommend. And then I will go over rotation. And at the very end, I'll go over stats and chance, consumables, embellishments, trinkets, and all that. All right, so going over the major changes, first of all, the, our mastery was changed. In case you didn't know what the mastery did before in 10.1 and the rest of Dragonflight, is that the more mastery you had, the more damage increase you got on a target for having both of your dots on it. So Sandfire on a target would increase your nature damage dealt towards that target, and Moonfire would increase your arcane damage towards that target. They changed it now, so you get approximately 70% of the effect from your mastery without dots up. And approximately 30% of the effect will be with dots up. So you will get your full effect of your mastery on a target if you have Sunfire and Moonfire up. But even if you don't have the dots up, you still get a little bit of value. More than zero at least, which we had before, right? So what does this mean? This just means that if uh, you do a, let's say a boss or you're in a plus and things die incredibly quickly, then you don't have to sit there and apply your dots and then they die two seconds afterwards anyway. So it just means that you do a little bit more damage with your Starfall and with your Star Search without your dots up, which is just a quality of life change. Then they also changed some talent positioning. They switched Star Lord and Power of Goldrin, which means that you don't necessarily have to pick up Power of Goldrin now if you want to go for a more AoE heavy build. They also changed the position of Ethereal Kindling and Shrapnel, which means that you can pick up more starfall damage without having to pick up the dot extension if that ever helps you out. Then they changed Rattle. Rattle the Stars is now a passive buff which just reduces the astral power cost of your starfall and your star search and increases its damage passively so don't have to worry about min-maxing it anymore. And they also changed Mushroom to only be one talent point. So you get the Mushroom damage plus the dot application from this one talent point. All right, then we also have a new tier set. The tier set is approximately a 5% damage increase from the old tier set. And one more thing to note is that the old two piece plus the new two piece is approximately the same damage as in the whole new set. So the four piece of the new set, which you should be simming. So if you get uh, new tier pieces and you're not sure, should I just equip the old one or switch to a new one? Make sure you sim it, but two piece and two piece is approximately the same gain as uh, the new four piece. All right, so the two set bonus says when Eclipse ends or when you enter combat, enter a dream state, reducing the cast sum of your next two Starfires or Rouse by 40% and increasing the damage by 100%. So the way this works is that you actually get a buff whenever you enter combat. Uh, it's called dream state, it has two stacks and it's infinite duration. It does not stack up further than two. And you, there's three different occasions where you get this buff when you enter combat, when you exit Eclipse, or when you enter Incarnation. Keep in mind, this does not count for Pulsar stacks, only your three-minute cooldown Incarnation. And um, they're infinite, and if you override them, you override them. You don't like get three stacks or four stacks or whatever, so if you have two stacks of Dream State and then you proc it again, it's just going to be, you're going to be losing out on two stacks. Then the four piece says, Star Search or Starfall increases your current Eclipse Arcane damage or nature damage bonus by an additional 2% up to 10%. So this just means that if you are in Eclipse and you star searching and star falling, you get extra bonus damage from your Eclipse. And um, this does not necessarily change your play style at all because we kind of already play around this um, by our default rotation anyway. So let's quickly go over the single target talent build. This is uh, very similar to what we had before. We're still playing War of Loon and Nature's Balance instead of the Starfall um, talents, of course, because on full single target, you're not going to be pressing Starfall. We're still playing Friend of Fae and Denizens. The major change is that we are running Elune's Guidance now over Radiant Moonlight. And Elune's Guidance is just a passive buff. You don't have to worry about it too much. It just reduces your astral power cost for both Star Search and Starfall, so you don't have to worry about it at all. And outside of that, we don't really have any other active talents that you really have to worry about outside of a Warrior Balloon. 
And uh, New Moon, we still play that, but uh, we don't play Radiant Moonlight anymore, so it's not going to be as complicated to use because we don't have those double full moon astral power gains to worry about. Then for Mythic Plus, I do have this build for you that you can try out. Keep in mind that these builds are going to vary a lot depending on what you do, and there might be other builds that uh, we figure out that might be better later on, so definitely keep an eye on uh, other players' builds throughout so like the M-plus season, see if there's things that people play differently. But yeah, the main difference here is that we don't play the Innocence in front of Faye anymore, but we play Wild Mushroom now, and we don't we play Elune's Guidance instead of Radiant Moonlight. So yeah, the playstyle is still very similar, uh, except we have that extra Mushroom talent now. And I will go over the playstyle a little bit later. All right, let's go over the opener real quick. So when you're fighting a rate encounter, then start at max range at 45 yards. And between four and three seconds, you want to precast two rafts. The reason why you want to do that is because you will finish those casts before you enter combat. And therefore, you can enter Lunar Eclipse before you enter combat, which does not reset your Eclipse casts. All right, so we cast Wrath, Wrath, Starfire. Then you're going to be in combat and the boss is going to be pulled. You're going to apply your dots and then you cast another Starfire because you now have another stack of Dream State. So you want to make sure that you use both of your Dream State procs here. And if you're in Lunar Eclipse, of course, you want to be using them on Starfire. And then you enter Incarnation and then you continue your normal rotation. Now, um, outside of the opener, on single target, you want to keep up your dots, refresh them in Pandemic, don't let your dots run out. Don't refresh them before Pandemic either. Then you want to enter Solar Eclipse on single target, and you want to cast Wrath in Solar Eclipse. If you accidentally entered Lunar Eclipse, you want to also cast Wrath in Lunar, unless you have a Dream State buff. I will talk about this later. Then you want to spend your Astral Power on Star Search, of course. The highest priority is going to be stacking up your Star Lord and making sure you use your boat stacks at the start of an Eclipse. And the very natural playstyle that is going to result uh, from that is enter Eclipse, cast Star Search, or use your Astral Power and Star Surges at the start of the Eclipse. At the end of the Eclipse, make sure you start pooling Astral Power again. So when you enter the next Eclipse again, you again have Astral Power to make use of your boat stacks or your crit bonus, and you can stack up your Star Lord again initially. So it kind of is just this natural playstyle of spending Astral Power at the start of the Eclipse, pooling Astral Power at the end of Eclipse. All right, then let's quickly talk about Dream State. It's our new two-piece. The three situations where Dream State entered are we talked about. And the one most important thing about it is that you don't want to waste your Dream State procs, right? So you don't want to press Incarnation if you already have Dream State procs up. You want to use them first. And the way you want to use them is when you're in Solar Eclipse, you want to use um, your Dream State procs on uh, Wrath. And if you're in Lunar Eclipse, you want to use it on Starfire. And if you're in Incarnation, you also want to use it on Wrath on single target. Then the four-piece bonus I already talked about as well. Uh, if you're in Eclipse and you proc a Pulsar proc, it will extend your stacks. And if you press Incarn in an Eclipse, then it will not extend your stacks. So pressing Incarn out or waiting for Eclipse to end before you press Incarn does make sense because you also will get a Dream State proc. Make sure you use those Dream State procs before you press Incarn. And then you also get a Nature's Grace proc as well. Then for Moons on single target, you want to make sure you use your Moons inside Incarnation or a Pulsar proc. Unless you would be capping your stacks or you would be, for some reason, like overcapping Astral Power, right? So focus on using your Moons within a Pulsar proc or within Incarnation. And if you overcap, then make sure you use it in Eclipse. And if you absolutely uh, cannot use it in Eclipse or in Incarnation, which shouldn't be happening, but if it does, then you can also use something like New Moon outside of an Eclipse as well. All right, now let's talk about Eclipse. On one to two targets, you want to enter Solar Eclipse and you want to cast Wrath in that Solar Eclipse, even on two targets. On three or more targets, you want to enter Lunar Eclipse and you want to cast Starfire, if your Starfire hits all three targets, um, of course. And then you also want to cast Star Search on one or two targets as well. And if there's three or more targets, then you want to cast Starfall. Then let's quickly go over the AoE rotation. When it comes to dots, you do want to apply Sunfire unless the targets die incredibly fast and it spreads. So Sunfire is, of course, a um, the dot that spreads. So if there's 10 targets on top of each other, you just want to press Sunfire, right? Unless they die within three seconds, then probably not. But um, if 
the targets are all stacked and you just need to one global to apply it, then just apply it. For Moonfire, it's a little bit different because Moonfire, of course, takes longer to apply. So for a Moonfire to be worth it, the targets need to live for more than six seconds and you need to not overcap Astral Power with it as well. Then you press Starfall with your Astral Power, of course, you spend it on that spell and you want to make sure you use it if you would be overcapping Astral Power no matter what situation you're in. No matter if you're in Eclipse or out of Eclipse or in Incarnate or not, if you would be overcapping Astral Power, press Starfall. Then on AoE, you also enter Lunar Eclipse and you cast Starfire, of course. And you want to use your mushrooms to apply Waning Twilight, mainly. So when, when you enter a pool, you don't immediately want to press Mushroom, Mushroom, Mushroom. You do want to make sure you stagger your mushrooms to get the debuff, the dot of your mushrooms, to get the Waning Twilight buff by having uh, Sunfire, Moonfire, and Mushroom dot on the targets. Then you want to cast Full Moon, mainly in Incarnation and Pulsar procs on AoE. But on AoE, it's not that important to cast Half Moon and New Moon inside Pulsar or Incarn. Half Moon you should still cast in Eclipse and not out of Eclipse, but New Moon you can cast at any time. So don't worry about that too much, as long as your Full Moon is in Pulsar and Incarn. Then you shouldn't be wasting your Dream State buffs either on AoE, as I talked about earlier. Uh, if you just exited Eclipse and you just got your Dream State buff, don't immediately press Incarn because you will be overwriting them. Same when you enter Combat. So if you start a pull, you immediately get your Dream State buffs because you enter Combat. Don't immediately cast Incarn. Make sure you use those Dream State buffs first. All right, now let's get over stats and chance, consumables, embellishments, and trinkets. So I do want to say that, first of all, you should always sim your character. If you don't know how to sim your character, I actually uploaded a guide on my YouTube on how to use raid bots. It's, um, the guide is a little bit older, but it still works. It still applies to today. So just check it out and uh, just go over the guide. It's very quick and it's very easy to understand how raid bots works. And once you understood how it works, it's going to be so nice for you to figure things out like this. So you don't have to rely on people telling you what to do. You can just do the math for yourself, for your character and see what you should be doing. So definitely go and check it out and start to your character if you aren't doing that already. All right, one thing I do want to say about stats is that stat weights are not necessarily relevant. You shouldn't be simming stat weights um, because they change very heavily on like very quick things. Like if you use a hissing rune rather than a howling rune, then all of a sudden your stat weights are different. So simming your stat weights is not really relevant. One thing I do want to note about stats though is that mastery is going to be slightly more important this patch for us because they, the way they changed the mastery uh, made mastery better for us for some... Uh, for some reason, I'm not going to really explain here, but if you, uh, as I said, if you want more detailed info, you can go over to the compendium and just check out the written guide. All right, then when it comes to enchants, again, you should be simming your character to make sure what's best for you, but it's very likely the best enchants for you is going to be mastery enchants on anything that you can put mastery on, spell threat on uh, your legs, then uh, stats on your chest, of course, and avoidance is generally good for survivability if you want to put that on, on the other things. Now, for weapon and chance, you either want to put Suffolk Devotion or Wafting Devotion. Um, it's very difficult to say what's better because it really depends on your character. So if I were you, I would just always sim this to make sure that you're putting the correct enchant. All right, then when it comes to consumables, you want to use ultimate power pots, of course. You want to use int food or second secondary stat food now the more gear you're getting the more likely it is that the secondary stat food is going to be better for you than the intellect food because there's more secondary stats on the food than you get intellect and because of diminishing returns and um the more item level we have the more intellect we have compared to secondary stats it might make the secondary stat food better but this is something you have to sim again for your own character to see uh, what happens for you then the best flask would be the Verse flask. I just recommend Verse because it also gives you survivability, which we're struggling a lot with. So definitely just go with Verse flask. It's really good damage-wise and it gives you survivability. Uh, I would I use it both rating and then in plus. Then when it comes to rune for your weapon, the probably the probably best rune is uh, the mastery rune, which is the hissing rune. But again, sim your character to make sure that um, that is true for you as well. All right, so when it comes to embellishments, I do recommend to run the same embellishment, at least initially, that we've been running in Season 2. So the Toxic Thorn boots and the patch, Toxic patch. The really good thing about running the boots at the start of the new patch is that you get the full value of the damage by only crafting the boots. Because the boots 
damage scales with item level, but the patch does not. So you get full value as if you would have two high item level embellishments on your gear. And therefore, crafting boots initially with only one spark makes a lot of sense. Now, later on, you can always reconsider. The problem with the boots, of course, is that you cannot recraft them. And that is something you have to keep in mind. If you're not sure about the boots and you'd rather maybe run something else, then you should maybe consider running a different embellishment where you can switch to something else. For example, blue silk and lining could be already good with a low uptime. If it's around 40%, then that one already would be pretty good. And you can also consider running some of the new embellishments as well um, that have been added this um, this year. So definitely check that out as well. And um, the necklace that I forgot the name of, it's Lariat. There we go. Lariat is actually a really good embellishment too. If you have a lot of sockets, now usually the start of Apache won't have a lot of sockets, so that's the downside of it. But eventually it will be a pretty good embellishment for both um, M plus and for raiding as well. So my opinion, craft boots. But um, if you want to just hold off and maybe think about it a little bit more, or you want to craft something where you can re-craft the embellishment, then you can also maybe focus on something else. All right, moving on to trinkets. So for trinkets, you definitely should be simming your character um, because it totally depends on item level and your character and what other trinkets you have. But I'm going to give you some dungeon trinkets and some raid trinkets that are good um, for single target mainly, just so you know what you should be going for when um, patch starts or when the season starts. So for dungeon trinkets, the best ones are going to be Balefire Branch from Waker's Manor. We have the Mirror Trinket, which is from Mirror Sun's Rise from Dawn of the Infinite. And we have Calculated Genosaur Blood, which is from Everbloom. I probably pronounced that wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then we have Sea Star from Throne of the Tides. For Raid Trinkets, the best one is going to be Pip's Emerald Friendship Batch, which is from the Council Boss. Then we have Nimue's Unraveling Spindle, which is from Nimue. And then another good trinket would be Bellorello's The Suncaller, which is from Tindril. But keep in mind that this um, trinket is not going to be very good unless you're in melee. You have to be in melee to be able to get the full value out of this trinket. Very quickly, I'm going to go over Cancel Aura. Disclaimer, you don't have to Cancel Aura Star-Lord. Don't have to do it if you don't want to. If you don't know how to do it, you're not sure, or you just plainly don't want to Cancel Aura, don't do it. If you want to min-max your DPS and you want to gain value and just do a little bit more, then it would be best to, can to make a macro to Cancel Aura your Star-Lord buff. The way you want to do it is that you always want to Cancel your Star-Lord if it's below two seconds left and you would be star surging and there's no other way of you not star surging right so let's say you're in a situation where you're in an eclipse you are at 80 astra power and your star lord has less than two seconds left in this situation your next move would be star surging right but since your star lord has less than two seconds you would be canceling it and then star surging so you don't cancel your star lord unless you would be star surging or star falling, right? Don't randomly cancel your Star Lord just because it's less than two seconds. But if it's less than two seconds and you would be star surging or star falling next, then you cancel Star Lord and then you go with star surge or star fall. All right, so I hope this covered most of the questions that people have about Moonkin in 10.2. If you have any more questions, you can obviously um, go over to my stream at twitch.tv slash Nagura and ask me directly there. Or you can ask in the comments below. You can also always go to the compendium that I mentioned before and see if the question is answered there or you can go and ask in the dream growth uh, discord channel as well I'm sure there's lots of very nice people that will answer your questions uh don't say Nagura said though yeah don't you ever go into the dream growth and say Nagura said <laughs> otherwise they hate me okay stop doing that <laughs> anyway uh thank you so much for watching hope uh, this guide helped you out have a nice rest of your day and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet i would appreciate that a lot and stay tuned for more guides like this and uh, see you next time <laughs>